Hey fun fans, before we get to this video, I want to give a big shout out to all of you who have been spreading the word of fun to help us stay Lob Light Independent through your donations, bits, and subscriptions, and also to the sponsors of this segment, PTC and Striker. PTC currently has the Robots to the Rescue Challenge going on where you can earn a share of $7,000 for your team by designing a robot that helps solve a current world problem at onshape.com forward slash robots to the rescue. And Striker is looking for first and fun fans to join their team because they want to help support you in your first journey. Help develop solutions for current and future problems like the new emergency relief bed. Get details on how to join their team at careers.strykr.com forward slash first. Let's get into our top 50, starting with team 623 Cabbage Gang, made up of Alan, Aryan, and Aravav. Yeah, so for six, Team 623, um, just a few things real quickly. It's obviously a very big robot. I don't know that we have it up on screen yet. Um, it'll be a second. It's coming up. Um, but anyways, I guess I'll just go ahead and get started. Um, so one thing that I really liked about this robot was just it kind of seems like it can do everything, but I just had a bit more concerns about the structural integrity of the robot. There were a lot of big floating um basically like mechanisms that were really high on the robot, which was a bit of a concern. Um, so we can get the picture up. Okay, it looks like some pictures are coming up. Um, so yeah, that was my main concern with this robot. And then also just a few other like detail points. Um, the belly pan, there were a few issues with the cuts there. But overall, I really liked the robot. I thought that it was very interesting how the elevator would flip up at the top of the mat, at the start of the match um, in order to stay within um, the like bounds and frame perimeter at the start and yeah that's pretty much it all right so let's move on to our next team the 46th ranked team and that is team 228 nasa's secret seesaw made up of jake theo and chris first off i really like the name on this robot um but the robot did i think have a few rigidity issues in a few places if you look uh, at it Overall, I thought it was a pretty good design. Um, it's a little bit overbuilt in some areas, probably too many standoffs. Um, the one main thing that I didn't like, and this was a bit of a recurring theme with the robots, was uh, using half-inch hex shafts as pivots. Uh, if you're putting a lot of weight, especially like 10 pounds on there, uh, that may lead to issues later on. Overall, pretty good robot, though. All right. So let's move on to our 19th ranked team, Team 430, Blame Redacted. Designed by Devin. I really liked 430's manipulator. It was a weight-only robot. And for handling weights, I think it would do a pretty good job. Obviously, enough effort went into that. Um, where it fell somewhat short was the uh, the drive base. It was not very detailed. Uh, it looked like you know all, a bunch of time got put in the manip manip manipulator, and then the drive base just kind of uh, didn't have any cutouts for the... the gearboxes and things were clipping through it and there weren't any mounting points for the electronics but uh, what what was there was really good and that's why it uh, placed where it did and if there was equivalent kind of drive base stuff then it probably would have been a top tier robot all right that's going to move us to our 43rd ranked team which is team 487 catathone made up of matt chance and bobby Right. Sorry, that, that's me. <laughs> uh, yeah, so so for team uh, 487, um, I really liked the robot. I thought it was very unique how the uh, elevator was a bit offset to the side. I thought that I didn't see that with any of the other robots that I judged. Um, so that was very good use of space. I have the shooter on one side, elevator on the other. Um, I thought that that would maybe induce some issues with center of gravity, um, but I can't say that definitively. Um, but one other thing that I just wish that I saw a bit more of is that there were a lot of Versa planetaries and planetary gearboxes on this robot, and they're great and all, but um, I just wish that I saw a bit more custom gearboxes or some type of belt system, especially on that shooter. Um, I'm not a huge fan of Versa planetaries on shooter wheels um, either. And then I also just had, I think that this is just something that comes with uh, footballs, but there were just like a lot of open spaces in the like basically in the train from floor all the way up to shooter. Um, whenever I put footballs in there, it looked like there were a lot of places where it could potentially fall through. Um, so that didn't necessarily help in any way 
Um, but I really like the swerve drive, um, and yeah. Awesome. That's going to move us to our 30th ranked team, Team 584, just printed from Alex. Yeah, so uh, one of the things that this robot had that I really loved is that it really understood that those weights were super heavy. So um, my note was that that is very good. Uh, proper beefy, torquey robot arm uh, is a surprisingly rare sight was another note that we had in here. Um, still needs some tweaking. Uh, football manipulation looked incomplete, uh, but that that arm and not having suction cups on it was a really good move. Agreed. That's going to move us to our 18th ranked team, Team 578, Harper's Board from Harper. So this... Uh... <laughs> Personally, it was one of my favorite robots that was submitted. I thought it was extremely aesthetically pleasing. I didn't like the mechanic drive, but that's cool. It was well executed. Uh, in the scouting sheet, it noted that V-Slam and sensor fusion would be required to make this robot function, but this is Catathon, so that is totally okay with me. <laughs> um, I thought there was, though, in this robot, the, the great takeaways, there's a lot of really good thought given to putting rigidity where it's important. Um, I did think some of the pivots are probably a little bit underbuilt, but this robot had a wonderful amount of detail, and the DFM was phenomenal. All right, that moves us to our 20th ranked team, Team 590 from Alex and Steve. This robot I liked uh, due to the, uh, the the concept of taking a, a design that, frankly, I didn't think was particularly effective uh, their their uh, their weight grabber was somewhat small and didn't have a ton of positive locking and as a uh, uh, mr n said the plates are really heavy um, and they had a vertical uh, vertical spin dexer which is kind of uh, kind of neat uh, but despite me not liking a few of the kind of high level concepts around how they did them the execution of what they decided to do was really really well done um, they they properly thought out what it would take to make their vision of the, the strategy and the systems work uh, and and ran with it. And for that reason, I think it was pretty good. Some of their their uh, pocketing was pretty aggressive, uh, which is kind of a just a minor nitpick. But I, I like the robot. It was it was well put together and well thought out. All right. That moves us to our 34th ranked team. Scene 612 to Chessy Puffs from Anaj and Daniel. Yeah, so for Team 612, um, just some things that I really liked about this robot is I thought that it could do everything reliably well, and I also liked all the way up for the footballs until it got to the shooter. Um, once it got to the shooter, I wish that they would have added some type of bottom plate. Um, it looked like maybe a football could fall through the bottom there, um, but overall, the robot honestly doesn't look... Um, that bad um or honestly it looks pretty good uh, sorry about that i'm a bit negative there but anyways um one thing that i did notice that i think that they should probably look out for is you can see the intake looks like it's very far outside of frame perimeter and so i went ahead and i measured that and it was 15.99 inches which i think is a bit concerning um you never know what type of inspector you're going to get at a competition um but yeah, uh, overall good robot. Also, I think that another thing that you're gonna hear a lot of the judges repeat throughout tonight um, is the they had a suction cup on the back. And so as Mr. N said, um, these weights are very heavy and a lot of the judges, including myself, don't really have that much confidence in a suction cup to hold these weights. Um, so that's just another thing that I didn't know was the best idea. I would have liked to maybe see a grabber, but overall um, really nice looking robot and really good. All right. That moves us to our 47th ranked team, Team 573, IP0 on fire from Allness. So first off, this uh, this robot was a solo submission. I want everyone to keep that in mind. And the creativity on this is absolutely through the roof. A, a round <laughs> robot using a ball drive blew me away. Uh, and the part that I liked most about it was the fact that it was actually very well designed. Uh, there was a lot of really good sheet metal on this robot. It was just a drivetrain, so it lost, you know, a lot of points on effectiveness. Uh, but the the packaging on this robot was phenomenal. The execution of the concept was great, uh, and personally, I I absolutely loved it. With a couple of extra weeks, I think we would have had a whole round manipulator and stuff. All right, that moves us to our 26th ranked team, Team 545. Six what? 
Yeah, affiliated with uh, First Team 612. So um, this is one of the only robots that got comments from all four of the judges. And I'm just gonna read off some of the highlights here. This is my personal thing. I'm gonna give you high marks for the level of detail on this design, especially for the swerve modules that were really well done. Um, however, the weight carrier is gonna bend and break. And this is a comment that uh, all four of us pointed out. But I think that with a little bit of redesign, especially on the weight carrier, that this would be a top competitor. So good work on this project. All right, that moves us to our 48th ranked team, team. 480, the bad news catters from team 5943, the bad news gears. Yeah, so for team 480, um, I really liked uh, how they did not I think that a lot of teams, we kind of see this. It's a recurring theme in Catathon. They go outside of their comfort zone um, and they maybe just do a bit more that they can handle and the robot ends up just not fairly representing their CAD skills. But I think this is a good example of a team that kept within their bounds and um, stick to a good plan. And so they only can pick up weights, but the detail and just the overall mechanism on this robot was really good. I really like to see it. Um, just a few things that I wanted to add that maybe would have been a good addition is maybe some type of plate on the bottom um, to keep the plate to keep the weight from falling down, um, and then maybe just some grip uh, gripping material on the back, whether that be um, surgical tubing or whatnot. And then I just really love the detail on this robot. I don't know if you can see on stream, but they actually catted the wires from the Neo all the way to the Spark Max. And that's really impressive in my opinion. I mean, that's a lot of work um, that I guess didn't necessarily need to go in, go into this robot, um, but they got some extra detail points there. It's quarantine, why not, right? And that's going to move us to our 21st ranked team, Team 592 Astrobots from Sophia and Jared. This robot was uh, compact. It was one of the few that actually, it was maybe the lowest robot that I judged. Maybe there were others in the that I didn't, but uh, it was low. It was uh, effective. It was very fast, very grippy. It had an eight-wheel uh, center drop, uh, and it used sheet metal pretty pretty effectively. It had a kind of standard shooter with the wheels slightly twisted. Uh, the shooter feed, I don't think, might have been super reliable. Uh, and they had kind of uh, hoppers to intake from a human player. But it was a, a simple, effective shooter, and then there was detail there, and it was catted pretty well. And All it right. was low. That's always a good thing. So let's move to our 25th ranked team, Team 616, Subduction, from Karthik. And I'm really sorry, I know I'm butchering your name a bit enough. OK, so for Team 616, I really like this robot. Um, I thought that. Honestly, some parts of this robot um, were really impressive, but then the one thing that I mainly struggled um, just like coming to like terms with with this robot was it being able to actually intake footballs and get them all the way to the shooter. Um, they went with a very complex method of doing it. They have a spindexer like we saw with some robots um, in the 2020 FRC game, um, but I just I saw a lot of potential for footballs to fall into the center of it um, or maybe don't go into their little cups perfectly and I think that that would have hurt in the long run. Another thing is is um, I really worry about the structural integrity of the shooter. Um, just I mean the pocketing is uh, the pocketing is there for sure. Um, <laughs> But on the back, um, the claw was, I really like the claw. I thought it was a very robust claw um, to grab the weights. And I really like the gearbox and how everything was compacted inside of there. So I really like the claw. I just wish that we could have maybe seen a bit more of the robustness that was on the claw on things like the shooter. And then also another thing that I did notice, and I assume that they just didn't have time to get to it, was that the intake has no way of coming inside a frame perimeter. So that... That, that wasn't great, but um, overall, great robot. Um, really liked it, and very cool idea as well. Okay, that moves us to our 50th ranked team, Team 361, Cad Fuse from Aksha, Kevin, and Joy Deep. So this robot had pretty high levels of detail and completeness in how it was designed. Uh, I thought the manufacturing was pretty good, is reasonable for an FRC team, especially one of the CNC router to build. Uh, I kind of was a little suspicious of how effective the concept for the weight manipulator would be. Um, I think generally, given that, you know, in, in this, in FRC, we've never dealt with footballs before. This is something a lot of teams ran into is this is genuinely a, a new challenge and it's kind of hard to gauge how well things would work. So 
I was suspicious, but maybe if they built it, they'd prove me wrong. The uh, one part of this robot I couldn't get over was the cat for the bumpers. Guys, I can see the rest of your robot. I know you're skilled. Those bumpers need some work. <laughs> All right, that'll move us to our 38th ranked team, Team 537, Hectimus Prime, made up of Team 3229. Well, um, I like the the uh, uniqueness of this robot. It, it uh, used Swerve Drive in a format that I didn't see in any other. It's not a, it's not a square base, it's very rectangular. And um, it has a pretty large capacity for the footballs, but I had a few questions and concerns about it. One is that the ball shooter probably would struggle to shoot controlled balls because it would not shoot a spiral. And two, I think that the uh, weight intake forklift design is not gonna work as well as an active intake. However, I really do like the detail work that went into the rendering on this. I think it's a really neat looking robot. Agree, I really like the color scheme. All right, that'll bring us to our 31st ranked team, Team 586, The Matrix. Made up Neo. I, uh, when I first saw this robot, it took me a second to figure out how it was packaged. Uh, it was pa uh, very kind of dense uh, in its starting configuration, uh, but the uh, packaging was pretty smart. The uh, uh, weight plate arm, the entire thing could fold down uh, in a pretty interesting mechanism that would allow it to traverse kind of a lower bar. Uh, the sh they used a uh, adjustable hooded shooter, which I could see working. The hood adjustment itself was a bit uh, clumsy, and the uh, feed into the shooter, I, I, I had my suspicions about uh, something with these footballs, and especially if you're imparting spin on them, is that the uh, consistency of the feed into the shooter matters a lot. And if you don't constrain the footballs to be pretty much in the same place and moving in the same pattern every time, you're going to have problems. And uh, if I remember correctly, I don't have this in my notes, but, but I'm pretty sure they had their, their shooter and their intake pretty much right next to their hopper without any really awesome alignment. But uh, that said, it was uh, reasonably well detailed. It was uh, cleverly packaged. You could see that they started the design knowing how their robot was going to work. And uh, I, I liked it. All right, that's going to move us to our 24th ranked team, Team 629, Dan and RJ's Windows and Doors. From you guessed it, Dan and RJ. So for Team 629, um, I really like this robot. I thought that it was really small, um, which was very, uh, I mean, I didn't see a robot that was shorter than this one from my um, judging pool. Um, but overall, I really like this robot. One detail that I really loved about this robot is, um, as Matt mentioned earlier, um, the balls are not uniform, and we're not used to seeing that in FRC. So a lot of teams just use still the same rollers that we see a lot of in FRC, even in this year's game. Um, but they actually made basically like rollers that are kind of like a cone shape inward as a way to basically form to the football. So I thought that was really unique. Um, and I'm glad that they like actually looked at that. Um, then one other thing is their elevator um, has their weight grabber on the back. One thing that I did worry about that was um, it looks like very thin polycarbonate. And as most people know, polycarbonate is known to bend. Um, so I just don't really know that polycarbonate is what you're looking for to pick up weights and over the course of the season I'd be concerned about the integrity of that but overall the elevator looks great and I really like the detail obviously the swerve drive looks good I especially like the covers on the swerve drive uh, very nice robot overall good job guys cool let's gonna move this to our 28th ranked team team 352 a Telerex from Cougar so something I think we all kind of struggled with in looking at the robots that were submitted uh, was gauging how effective they would be, given that we'd never really seen a challenge like this before. Uh, but this was one of probably only a few robots that I remember looking at and thinking, this is a really convincing robot in, in the way it's laid out, the simplicity of the mechanisms, and the chances that it would have you know, of working pretty well, especially with a lot of refinement. Uh, there was some, you know, pretty clever outside-the-box thinking here. It wasn't just an attempt of throwing conventional FRC design at the problem to see what would stick. Um, pretty good overall design for manufacturer. There were a lot of details on this robot that were missing. You know, not all, all the fasteners, electronics, materials were there. 
Um, but I could I could totally see where the design was going, and I think it was filled in well um, for what was submitted. I agree. That's going to move us to our 44th ranked team, Team 607 Bat Suit from Aditi, Gloria, and Alex. Yeah, so um, I really like this robot. Uh, I thought it was very interesting. Um, one of my notes, um, just for myself, is I said that it reminds me of a 2019 robot that was adapted to play this game, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Um, but it just kind of reminded me of a lot of the tall robots that we saw this year, um, especially Spectrum's robot. Um, I don't know how many people are familiar with their robot. But I really like the V into um, the runs that go up to the shooter. Um, I didn't really understand why timing uh, belts weren't used at the top and instead they used polycord, it looks like. Um, and then also I just kind of didn't know about the long runs of belts, if the footballs would actually be able to make it up um, that long run. Um, but I really like the elevator in the back. It looked very robust. Um, and it looked like it would be able to hold the weights pretty well and be able to place them. And then one other just small minor thing that I noticed is that they had chain and um, it didn't look like there was any type of weight attention to the chain, which is always a bit of a concern um, if you're wanting to use chain. But overall, the drivetrain looked nice. Um, really like this robot. Um, just had a bit of a concern about the feed system to the shooter. Okay, that's going to move us to the 37th ranked team, Team 281 Technical Difficulties from Theo, David, and Parker. Okay, so I actually had a lot that I wanted to say about this and a lot of questions that I have about it, but I'll try to keep it short. Um, first of all, the intake uh, on this one and the, uh, the indexing system seems to be made out of Tinker Toys, which is a thing that I played with when I was a kid a long time ago. Um, I love that they use something other than off-the-shelf components for that. Um, I also love that they used unusual uh, materials, uh, carbon fiber throughout. The shooter wheels seem to be custom wheels and not off the shelf in any way. I'm not sure what they're uh, what they're thinking about doing there, but it looks like maybe uh, using some hard rubber with a maybe a bronze or brass uh, hub. And then also the shooting mechanism itself, once you get the, the ball out of the wheels, is not the typical sort of method of putting a spiral on the ball by, by tilting the wheels. They put two Omni wheels, one on either side, moving in opposite directions. And the idea there is to get the, the ball uh, spiraling after it comes out of the shooter wheels. I do not know if that would work but I do know that that is the uniquest, the most unique approach that I saw to getting the, the ball to spiral on any of the robots that I judged. Um, and so I really like that. Um, I think that there's a lot of questions, a lot of things that, that um, don't have proven effectiveness in an FRC game. But again, this is a, a football. We've never shot a football before. So uh, who knows? I like it. I mean, it works in CAD, so it's good. <laughs> so I'll, that'll move us to our 32nd ranked team, Re from Jadden. The uh, first thing that kind of stuck out to this, to me about this robot, and uh, uh, we're coming back to the weights again, is that this team used a suction as their method for grabbing the weights. Um, these weights are very heavy, as they were described in the game manual, and they're made out of a kind of soft plastic, and that gives multiple concerns in trying to suction them. We saw some teams in deep space try to suction hatches, and uh, there are you have a little bit of learning and cat intuition from, from suction grabbing, uh, unlike footballs that we've never shot before. We kind of have seen how suction works, and uh, a lot of teams, including this one, used two little suction cups uh, to... Uh, or two suction kind of points to to hold on to one of those weights. And uh, that doesn't have much redundancy. Uh, these things are kind of soft plastic, and if they get scratched or dented or damaged uh, during the game, as of course they would, uh, you're going to then be down to one or zero suction, and uh, that's not going to hold a weight that heavy. Uh, there are some teams that did more uh, suction cups, and that is better. But for this team, the suction grabbing seems honestly in some cases, a little bit lazy. It's not a really awesome solution. I don't think it'll work for uh, this game very well. Uh, so that that's all robots, not just this one, but uh, just to, to keep that in mind with other, other things. Um, and this robot also had a shooter where instead of feeding balls back through the shooter, they fed it sideways into the wheels and then out. 
and I uh, didn't see that feed working particularly well. Uh, it would kind of slightly connect with the wheels and then hit kind of the side of the, the shooter frame before it would fully engage. Uh, again, it's something that you know it'd be hard to tell how well it would work, but uh, it didn't seem particularly effective. And uh, there, then you already heard me about their their weight manipulation. So otherwise, uh, their detail was there. It was it was mostly well thought out. Yeah. Okay, that's going to bring us to our thirty or twenty third ranked team, six two six rice hat dude from Hubert. Yeah, so for this robot, um, I thought it was really impressive. Um, you know, if I were doing the catathon just alone, um, to take on uh, just a robot this big and this complicated. So for a one man team, this is insanely, insanely impressive. Um, but I think that just overall um, thinking about this robot on the field is I just kind of worry about the like basically the control system for the robot um it's very complex you basically have the entire robot decides the drivetrain pivoting on one pivot um and you're trying to go across the field back and forth really fast i just wonder um how well that will would actually work um and then i also just worried about intaking balls um i thought it was very innovative how um it's basically two shooters on one shaft. I thought that was very interesting. I didn't really see a lot of that. Um, but overall, it's a very big robot um, that can basically go down to a small form factor. I'm not sure if we have that render, but basically the entire robot goes all the way flat, um, which I thought was just a really innovative idea that I didn't really see a lot of. Um, and then also with the weight manipulator on the back, um, I thought that that was uh, interesting how there was belts on the bottom. Um, I just worried about lining it up with the peg because there was no sort of hole for the, so like whenever you're placing it down, there wasn't space for the peg to go through. So I guess you kind of have to push it off a little bit. Um, and I just, I, I don't like the security uh, with that. But overall, really good robot, really impressive for one person. Um, good job. Okay, that's going to move us to our 29th ranked team, Team 567, Team Spork from Team 39 or 3196. So uh, this robot I, I thought was one of the more clever manipulator mechanisms that we had entered uh, for this catathlon. If you guys can see in the image there actually their weight manipulator um, is able to translate sideways on top of the elevator there. Uh, the idea being this would make it easier for them to align on the peg to score or retrieve these weights. Given that the robot also used a swerve drive, I'm not sure adding that extra degree of freedom was fully justified, but it was a, a pretty cool concept overall. Um, but it was somewhere I thought that probably would need a bit more iteration if this were to be done in real life. Um, this is the kind of place where you're talking about swinging you know, 10 pound weights back and forth. Uh, this is not where you want to skip over really thinking through that system. There are going to be some pretty large uh, torques that end up being applied to the elevator, uh, to the carriage, to all the structure that they have in place. And I wasn't sure that what they had was going to stand up to that. But that said, I really, really liked the concept of having their manipulator able to translate. Pretty good levels of detail on this robot. Uh, most of their fasteners for there it was a complete electrical system. Overall, was a, a pretty well-executed concept, I think, and definitely one of the more interesting manipulators that we saw entered for this competition. All right, that brings us to our 36th ranked team, Team 215, Delta Dynamics, from Team 1477. All right, so a couple of years ago, my uh, my team actually started designing a, a football shooting robot. We picked up some 12-inch diameter wheels. These 10-inch diameter shooter wheels are nearly equally scary to the ones that we bought. And so my <laughs> note here says these... 10 inch shooter wheels running on six, seven, seven, five pros are going to kill somebody. Um, I do like the intake and the indexer. Uh, I think the weight manipulator needs to be further developed. Uh, two suction cups isn't going to do it. Um, I think that the, the, basically it comes down to the shooter mechanism on this is really good for doing like, 10 times the length of the field that we're going to be playing on. And uh, <laughs> that's pretty powerful. Oh, did you catch me at the end? 
Oh, yeah. I was just saying that uh, it probably needs to be dialed down a little bit, but it's still a pretty cool shooter. Okay. That brings us to Team 33, or the 33rd ranked team, Team 599, Fly by Night from Ben and AJ. Parker. Uh, yeah. I'm, am I? Okay. No, you're good. <laughs> The uh, the intake and shooter on this robot was pretty cool, um, and I want to like it more, but the effectiveness of it is questionable. Uh, they have a in their entire kind of intake and shooter assembly is on a pivot that can uh, pitch up and down, and uh, that is a pretty, it could be pretty effective at you know intaking from either position and then shooting, uh, but the capacity suffers a bit. Um, and uh, their method of actually controlling that was just a pair of uh, 775s or some other motor on Versa Planetaries uh, without any, like the encoder ring wasn't on there, and a, that would be a very difficult thing to control and, and hold effectively um, with the amount of, kind of servoing power that those have. Um, but they did use, the, the, the shooter, once the balls got there, I think was pretty cool, and it was a clever design and kind of creative. Uh, and then their uh, weight elevator uh, was... Seem to lack a little bit of detail, uh, and it could have been implemented better. But the the concept of how they planned on picking them up was was solid as well. Okay, that moves us to our twenty second ranked team, Team Six One Eight, Team Omega from Nate. So um, this team, I thought it was very, like I think I said it a couple submissions ago. Um, just another team that uh, didn't bite off more than they could handle. Um, so it ended up being a really impressive robot because everything's really well done, well finished robot. Great renderings too. I love the renders on the field. Um, but overall, they can only do weights, um, which hurts their effectiveness. But overall. The robot, I really like this three-stage elevator, keeping it low, but at the same time being able to reach pretty high. Um, I thought that was very uh, innovative, like to see that. Um, also, another thing that I really liked is it's a continuous uh, belt uh, that goes through the three stages of the elevator, and they catted all of that in, which was really impressive. Um, was not expecting that, but very cool. Um, another thing, I mentioned this, I think, a couple of robots ago as well, is they have a Lexan sheet that is, uh, looks like 16th inch. I forgot what I measured it to be. Um, but I, I worry about that bending over the course of the season. Um, Lexan is meant to bend, and so I just see that bending over time and then the robot having uh, more struggles with picking up weights. Um, and then one other thing, I thought that uh, the radio was also kind of low on this robot. Uh, so I thought that maybe that could have, like there were clear, obvious places where it could have been brought up a bit higher. Um, obviously, the higher your radio is, the better uh, for connection. And uh, I wish that maybe we could have seen some pocketing on the belly pan um, to just, I really like their pocketing scheme that they did on the tube. I just wish that that could have been followed over there. But um, for this robot, I really liked everything that I saw, you know, I had minimal uh, dislikes about the robot um, and the detail was really there for this one especially on the elevator really like that um, overall great robot and I believe that this was a uh, one-man team as well so very impressive yep. for one person um, in one week uh, so great job okay that moves us to our 39th ranked team team 580 the square bots maybe from Raheel I think that's actually an, an emoji. So yeah. if anyone knows how to pronounce emojis, uh, they can let us know so we can get the it's, team name right. It's rendering on mine. It looks like a frowny face, but it's really tiny. Yeah, yeah, it's it's hard to tell. But take a look at this robot. Someone did it. We got a weight pass through coming uh, through an elevator here. This is a purely weight robot. Um, it, it, this is Catathon, so it is on a swerve drive, of course, so I'm not sure if, if the pass-through is fully justified as it might be with a more conventional drivetrain, but it was pretty cool that someone actually did attempt this. Um, they did so with some pretty decent levels of detail. You know, it's full uh, electrical system on this robot, um, but otherwise was a very unconventional concept that was approached with a lot of conventional FRC design. Um, Again, we're talking about a 10-pound weight here, and, and in the spec sheet, it said it wanted to be throwing these back and forth in, in like, under a second. Um, that's, I mean, just the, the 
inertia of that kind of system is it blows my mind. And I didn't think that um, there was quite enough mechanical robustness in the system. And that additionally, there would be some limits that we, you'd have to place on this robot in software. Usually in Catathon, we like to say that you know software programming doesn't count, whatever. But there are mechanical limits uh, to controllability. And this was a robot that I had a lot of trouble, you know, believing that they were going to pull off what they said they'd be able to do. But that said, it was a pretty crazy concept uh, to pull off in the first place. And I have a lot of respect uh, for following through on that. Yeah, and this is just a note. As Catathon teams, remember, you probably go to school with your programmers, okay? Make their <laughs> life a little easier, all right? Design for something that's easy to program. Not only will you have it easier time programming the robot, but I usually like to rely on mechanical stuff rather than programming. I think it breaks less. So that's going to move to our one, our 35th ranked team, Surf's Up, made up of Connor, Leith, and Taylor. So uh, this team, first of all, they took a lot of aesthetic cues from Team 4414, the High Tide, which I think was smart since that's probably the best looking robot in FRC right now. Um, but uh, there are a few things that I like about it a lot and some things that I think they should have worked on more. Um, first of all, I don't think that the suction cups, again, the theme of the suction cups, this isn't probably going to work very well, especially just those little tiny ones, even in a triplet formation, because if you miss any of them, it's not going to work. Um, I also wonder about the rotation of the football. It looks like the football is going to have to rotate 90 degrees in order to uh, come out in the spiral form, and I just don't see how that's going to happen. Um, so that's something you'd probably have to work on more, but I do love uh, the aesthetics of this robot and I do love the detailing on it. I think it's pretty cool. Yeah. So that's going to move to our 45th ranked team, Team 610, Grapes of Wrath from Matthew, Quinn, King, Yuan, and Jun. Okay, so for Team uh, 610, um, I like this robot. I think that um, maybe they... The thing with a lot of the Catathon robots that I notice um, is, and I think it's what separates um, the middle of the field from the great robots that we're about to get into with the top 15, um, is that people on the team make chunks of the robot and then they all put it together in one day. Um, and I felt like I could kind of see that with this robot. Um, unfortunately, you know, it's just room for improvement, obviously. Um, but maybe just streamlining the systems um, would have been a bit better. They look very um, boxy and look like they are separate systems. Um, and I had a bit of trouble trying to understand how exactly the weight mechanism would hold the weights. Um, I wish that we saw some type of pneumatic um, in there to maybe grasp onto them just in like a motor uh, stalling uh, using, and using the stall torque to hold them in there. Um, and then also with the shooter, um, it's powered on one Neo. Um, so I thought that, that was kind of concerning, um, considering teams uh, this year uh, struggled to shoot from long range with the small foam balls uh, with one Neo. So I think that shooting two footballs at a time with one Neo um, isn't maybe the best idea. Um, and then also I didn't really, our team, we have made a football robot and we've gone through some different prototyping um, with shooting and I didn't like shooting them longitudinally. Um, I thought that maybe that wasn't the best course of action. Um, and then I, another thing that I wanted to just add on um, that I think is true for all FRC robots, um, and I think that this one, I wish that they m maybe would have taken from it, is uh, shooting fast is uh, less important than shooting a consistent shot. So if you can't make any, it doesn't matter how fast you're shooting them. Um, I overall, really like the robot. Um, really cool concept. Um, love the swerve drive and the detail on this robot as well. Very nice. Good job, guys. That brings us to our 41st ranked team, Team 362, the Confused Diesel Mechanics from Team 2168. Yeah, this robot, I feel, looked really good, had a few clever things, one of them being that the uh, their hopper was on a linear stage that seemed like once it extended uh, for, uh, once the match started, it might have just stayed there. Um, and so they gained a lot of space just by having their entire kind of intake and hopper on the right of that picture just kind of pull out. Um, that was pretty neat. They shot, I, I can't tell if their shooter was designed to shoot the footballs longitudinally or if they just 
weren't constrained or because there's a big wide shooting roller and the, and a hood there. Um, so maybe their, their plan was that no matter where the football was, it could shoot straight or they shot on their side. Uh, either way, I couldn't see it being very consistent due to what I said about the, the consistency of the feed. Um, uh, so that, that was, that was kind of hard to, to predict what would happen besides it not being super great. Um, the, uh, Weight claw was uh, fine. It had a uh, kind of a, a, a wrist on the elevator, so it could kind of go straight up and down and then pitch. It looked a bit hard to control uh, with how they mounted and used it. Uh, they had some custom cut gears and stuff like that that uh, would need better controls. And I don't think I saw very many either limit, limit switches or encoders or sensors in general on most of the robots I judged. And uh, on this one, I think that, that, that the lack of sensing stands out because they would need something to, to control that. Um, but the uh, the detail was really good. The pocketing, while a little bit aggressive, was was pretty cool. Uh, they had some of their logos and stuff embedded into the pocketing, um, and the robot looked really well. And their swerve was uh, didn't look incredibly close to it, but or look into it incredibly well, but it looked all right as well. Great. That moves us to our 17th ranked team, Team 634, Alpha Team from Alejandro. Argaya and Will. Yeah, so this team, I really liked um, the looks of their robot. Um, I thought that just like the pocketing um, was a really cool something. I mean, I'm used to just seeing triangles on literally 90% of these robots. Um, so I thought the pocketing really spiced it up at the end of my judging, so that was pretty cool. Um, I really like the elevator taking inspiration from, um, I believe, 148 from uh, 2018 with the circular tube. Um, I really like those elevators. I don't know. Something about the circular tube makes them seem really cool to me. Um, so I really like that. Um, even though it may have been a lot of inspiration from them, it looks very similar. Uh, but overall, I like the robot. Um, my main concern was just the feed system up to the top of the shooter. Um, that looked very uh, suspect, as I have it in my notes. Um, but I really liked the uh, weight grabber. I thought that it was very uh, efficient, could pull them up. And that was another thing that I saw with a lot of robots is I thought to myself, can this go around, take a big hit from defense, and will the weight stay in the... And with this robot, the answer to that question for me was yes. I thought that it was going to be able to hold weights very well. Um, I think that the intake is a bit... Um, for lack of a better term, I don't mean it this aggressively, but kind of lazy um, with that big roller in the front. Um, I wish that we could have seen something um, with multiple rollers and not just one big roller pushing balls underneath the robot. Uh, but overall, besides the feed system, maybe the intake, I really like this robot. thought that was very pleasing to look at um, as far as the pocketing once you really got to look at this robot. Um, and the swerve drive, also a nice touch. And I also, one other thing that I really liked is how they hid um, the pneumatic tanks kind of underneath in between their swerve drive modules. I don't think you can see it on the renders, but they know what I'm talking about. So um, good job overall. like this robot. Great job, guys. All right. That'll move us to our 40th ranked team, Team 568 Blue Cheese, affiliated with Team 1086. Matt? Oh, all right. I think we could probably move to our 27th ranked team really quickly, which is team yep. 552, Team Atlas, from team 5190. So um, a few things that I noticed with this robot in particular. Um, first of all, it seemed to be very deeply influenced by this year's FRC game, the official FRC game. Uh, there were several robots, more than several, that were made um, with sort of a gravity-fed uh, hopper. And uh, teams that I can think of off the top of my head, 364 and 4944. And this seemed to be very much like those. As a matter of fact, there wasn't a whole lot to this robot that couldn't have easily been turned into a, a 2020 game robot. However, it was well done, and I actually thought it was a, it was a nice robot. Um, the, uh, uh, the, the, when it comes to aligning into the shooter, I think that um, it probably needed to have a little bit more thought placed into how do you get that football uh, to turn that basically a 70 degree angle 
so that you can take those shots. So uh, again, it's it's a nice looking robot. Looks very heavily influenced by this year's game. Um, probably could have done a little bit more to change it up for the different game piece. All right, it appears Matt has left his cryogenic chamber, so we could probably move back to Team <laughs> Blue Cheese, 1086. Yeah, sorry about that. I wasn't sure what happened. Um, but this was a pretty cool robot to take a look at. It was almost like if this were a, like a what's that Pokemon type moment, you could almost imagine this robot coming straight out of, you know, uh, 2018 with the, you know, front mounted elevator design um, and the braces that were put on there. But even though it looked kind of plain on the outside, there was a lot of pretty smart optimization uh, that they did in the way that it was designed. A lot of really compact choices that were made. Um, the image right here that you're seeing is in the uh, wrist gearbox, which I thought was really cleverly paired with the structure of the carriage. So it was almost kind of like uh, how in race cars, for example, they have a structural transmission. In a lot of ways, that's what they were doing as well. And it saved a fair bit of uh, space and a fair bit of weight as well. Um, so I could tell that a lot of thought had gone into the way that especially that wrist was designed. Um, but again, just, you know, looking at the the forces and the inertia that we expect, you know, in robots that are moving these weights around, I, I really was not sure um, if that was going to be as robust as it needed to be. Um, so I think as designed, it's a pretty good effort, um, but they might find that if, if they did build this, um, then they may go through a few revisions of, of shoring up strength where it needs to be stronger. Um, but I think this was a, a pretty creative concept and overall a pretty effective weight manipulation robot. I thought it would contribute well to whatever alliance it played on. Okay, that's going to move us to our 42nd ranked team, 601 Artificious from Thomas. This, this robot had a few kind of fun things going on. Um, the, let's start with their, their intake. Their intake was uh, on a the kind of, I don't know, their middle intake, the part between the shooter and the like a front rolling bar, uh, is on a four bar so that it could pivot up or down. Um, it was a, it was a, it's a cool mechanism and I, uh, like how it was done. I'm not sure how valuable it really is. Um, there's some value to be gained from not just focusing on a floor intake, but uh, an effective floor intake can work really well as well. Um, so they're kind of they're uh, raising it so that they can get things from the uh, from the human player is questionably informed, but well done. I liked it. Um, their shooter uh, was fairly standard. Again, it has the problem of not really aligning the footballs before shooting them. It's, it has a very wide channel until it hits the the uh, the rollers, or the, the, the flywheels, or the shooting wheels. Sorry, I'm a bit mixed up right now trying to read my notes on this one. Um, the uh, manufacturing of the shooter housing, uh, I, I couldn't really see how that was intended to be done in some ways. Um, and then their weight manipulator had a totally fine uh, elevator that was well done kind of it, it looked well it had some kind of custom little blocks on it and stuff I think which was nice um, but the actual weight grabber uh, looked like it was uh, unfinished or just kind of not done because it, it it was it, it would there's nothing there that would work um, I assume it's unfinished though just because the rest of the robot was well handled um, and it looks pretty cool and uh, yeah, that's all I have to say on this one Okay, moving to our 16th ranked team, just outside the top 15, we have team 630, Pianissimo from Animish, Vikram, and Claudius. Yeah, so this robot, um, I really thought that, um, as I said with another robot earlier, that it's very inspired, like a 2020 robot, uh, 2020 tall robot that we saw a lot of this year, uh, very similar to those. Uh, one thing I... They had a similar feed system to another robot that I talked about earlier, so I'm just really not too sure um, how you're going to consistently keep the footballs going up that long vertical straight um, the same way every single time. Um, so I, that kind of diminished my confidence just like a little bit on that robot. Um, but overall, I really liked just kind of the detail on it and uh, how the intake flops down. It's not just like a four-bar uh, mechanism. It's really just 
more than that. The complexity inside of all the plates that go into that was really impressive to me. Um, and then also, you know, as the judges have been echoing all night tonight, I'm sure that everybody's sick and tired of hearing it, but the two suction cups on the back is uh, truly lacking. I mean, we had similar setups in 2017 with the, uh, or sorry, 2018, no, 2019 with those two uh, suction cups on the back. Um, and you saw teams drop hatches, so I really don't know how um, teams are expecting to hold a 10 pound weight uh, with the same configuration. Um, but overall, I really liked the elevator, really liked um, the intake and the shooter. Just main thing was the feed system. I feel like that's a recurring theme. And obviously, their footballs are not easy to feed into a shooter or something like that. Um, really liked the detail. Also, one other quick note, sorry, I was just now reading through my notes on it, is the swerve drive. It wasn't like any other swerve drive that I've really seen before. I'm not sure if we have a render of it, but it's a very compact swerve drive with the motors inverted. Yeah, there we go. Um, it's up on screen now. But, um, you know, you see a lot of swerve drives with those motors facing up. But I really liked, I don't know how necessary it was for the robot, but it was just something different that I really liked to see with those motors um, inverted and belts running on the top. So that was really cool. But overall, really good robot. Nice job, guys. This video is brought to you in part by PTC. Look, during this time, it's important to look for challenges to keep your skills up and to help your team in fun development. The Robots to the Rescue Challenge can help you accomplish both by designing a robot that solves a real-world problem with a chance to win a share of over $7,000 for your team. Click the link in the description to get started at onshape.com forward slash robots to the rescue. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and Tier 2 Plus subscribers on Twitch keeping fun loud, live, and independent.